Again, you are a child of God. You are in Christ Jesus. Amen? You are in Christ. And I really believe this today. In Christianity today, we forget about all that we possess, all that we are, all that who we are as a Christian, and what we have at our disposal. There's things that we don't even realize that we can do with Christ Jesus. What we possess with Christ Jesus, what we are. So I want to help you this morning to encourage you not to sit there when you fail or you fall short. Listen, don't get discouraged. Realize, re repent, ask God forgiveness, and then keep on going because there's things that you already in a condition that you're in as a Christian, the position you are in as a Christian, and what you can do as a child of God because of you having Christ inside of you, being a child of God and being born again, that you possess. Amen? So I want to help you today a little bit about that. Here in 1 Peter chapter 3, let's start in verse 14 if we could. 1 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 14, says this, But if, <clears throat> but, but in... But and if you suffer for righteous sake, happy are ye. Many times people look at <clears throat> obstacles, tragedies, hindrances, sufferings, look at now, as bad things. But I want you to understand here, it's not all bad. If you're a child of God, if you die, guess where you're going? Going to heaven. Okay? And if God's going to take care and protect you with those sufferings and those trials and those temptations, those things that you're going through are not there to destroy you. They're there to make you <clears throat> shine. They're there to temper you. They're there to sit there and fine-tune you to shine as gold in a, in a fiery furnace. To get all the dross, all the impurities, all the, the wrong thinking, all the wrongdoing. How do you make yourself, make yourself look at yourself in a mirror of the Bible and see yourself, look at now, see yourself where you need some help. Where you need to realize that you have, you have too much control and God doesn't have no control. Amen? You get to start seeing things with, with how God wants you to see it. So he goes on here and says, But if ye suffer for righteous sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. People will sit there and say, You're no good. You must be out of the way. You must be. You're messed up. Listen, don't listen. We're not here to look at being someone that you're not. We're not here to sit there and meet up at other people's ex. Don't, don't look at what I want you to be. I'm not going to sit there and put you on. Like, I'm not going to put false expectations to you. I'm going to look at you at your potential. As a pastor, it's my job to be an example. It's my job to edify you and exhort you and reprove you and rebuke you. That's my job. But when I do it and I look at you, I'm looking at what you could be in Christ Jesus. I said the potential of what God can mold you and make you become. That is an encouraging thing. My job is to encourage you to take the steps of by faith to get to that point so that God can get a hold of you and make something great out of your life. Amen? And let, him, let Christ get all the glory. So when I look at you, I'm not here trying to put false, false expectations on you, but I know what God can do. And especially when you see glimpses of it. When I see glimpses of that stuff in your life, I go, wow, imagine if we were to tap into that and see how far you can really go for Christ. Amen? If you get rid of the world cares of this thing, the cares of this world out of the way, you get some of the, the sin that you want to continue entertaining in your life, get out of the way. If you want to stop hanging on to your past and start building to the future, what God can do. Amen? So listen, when you start seeing that stuff, look at what, what could happen. Amen? Now look at verse 15. It says this, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now, I want you to notice here, meekness and fear. You possess something that lost people don't, and that's Jesus. But I found out back in the day, when people first get saved, they tell people about Jesus in a very haughty way, almost in a self-righteous way, almost in they pound their chest, and they start preaching at you, start preaching with you. And he started pointing the finger at all the things that are all wrong with you. Listen, I already know I'm all wrong. I'm a mess today. If it wasn't for Christ, I'm still a mess. Do you know this pastor's not perfect? Mrs. Wigner, am I perfect? I am not perfect. There's, still, there's things that God's still working on in my life. 
And guess what? There's things that are working that God wants to work on your life. That's how it is. But you know what? So when I want to give an answer, what the answer is, people sit there all the time. They see they want to point out all the wrong things. Even I'm a you call yourself a pastor? Yeah. I'm a pastor. Oh, I can't believe you you believe that. I go, yeah, I do believe that. He goes, what? I go, yeah. Well, I heard, listen, I saw you get angry. Well, yeah, I could be angry and sin not. What? You're supposed to love everybody. I do, but some of you people are unlovable. <laughs> it's hard to love some of you people. It's tough. It's, chall it's challenging. So I, so, I give, so I give a meekness and a fear to make sure I give the right answer so I can put things in perspective. I said, you know what? I'm, 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 listen, I tell my congregation to pray for me so I can get enough strength to love. Enough patience and, and long suffering and forbearance so I can allow God to work on them. Pray for God to work on them because I can't work on them. They look at me like, huh? Well, they don't know, understand because they're not saved. So when I go ahead and approach people and I, and I want to give them an answer of hope, the answer is Jesus, I got to do it with some meekness and some fear. You know? Realizing that I'm not, I'm not listen, we have, a, we have a perfect God, but I'm not a perfect man. We're none, we're none of us are perfect, only Him. And it goes on in verse 16. Here's our text. Having, look at now, having a good conscience, that whereas that ye speak evil of you, of evildoers, that it may be ashamed, they have falsely accused you, you know, accuse your good conversation in Christ. So I want you to understand here. I want to make sure I give a good answer. I want to do it with a good conscience. And then I want to do it with a good lifestyle. Over time, your testimony will prevail. When you stay consistent on doing great things for God, when, you're, when you go ahead and you know the answer is Jesus, even though you fail miserably because you're not perfect, well, welcome to the club. But it doesn't mean you still can't say something good. You, can't say, you still can give the good answer, and the answer is Jesus. You can sit there and realize, when you sit there and put things in perspective, what's your answer to other people? Let them know that you're not perfect, but I'm trying to live right. I fall, that's why I need Jesus. That's why i got to depend on Jesus. And I'm trying to live with a good conscience. So when I go to bed at night, I'll make sure that I'm, I, there's something. Is there anything between me and, and the Lord? I want to take care of it. And then my conversation, my lifestyle, hopefully God will help me with the things that I fall short in. You know, those, those things that I want God to give me victory in. Those things that God's still trying to work on my mind and how I live, how I think, and how I feel. And look at things through God's eyes. That good conversation. This is talking about not out of your mouth, but your lifestyle. So can I tell you this morning, I want you to understand here that God wants you to do that. Look at now, if you go ahead and look at verse 17. For it is better that if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing than for evil doing. How many here before you guys saved did some bad stuff for the you know, you know, in the name of your reputation, you know, the you did stuff you didn't know that the devil is dictating you to do. Okay? And people sit there and go, man, I don't like you, man. You did wrong, man. But I, no, if I'm gonna get accused, I want to be accused of doing good stuff. Okay? I can't believe you you did that. Well, yeah, but I was doing good things. I was doing stuff for well doings, not evil doings, no. I'm doing it for the Lord. Do you know people think a message like this is offensive. When we go on a street corner and preach about Jesus, it's offensive. When we preach John 3.16 at a street corner, it's offensive, even though we're talking about God's love. It's still offensive. I can't, a lost person can't wrap it, or, can't wrap it around their head. It's, just, it's sad. Passing out a gospel track is offensive. But passing out anything else that goes against God is okay. It's accepted. Try it sometime. Go in your neighborhood. Come around here for a while. See, there's something raging there. The eyeballs, the evil looks they give you. It's sad. Make a stand for what's right. And do with meekness and fear. With the love, love just coming out of your heart. And you still get ridiculed. That's how it is today, a Christian. But someone else can sit there. Isn't it amazing how they defend Islam even though they're for... They're, they're for throwing gays off of buildings and, and executing them. When a woman gets raped, they, 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 they cut the head off of a woman that's been victimized by rape instead of the rapist. But God forbid you say anything against them. But when a Christian sits there and says, hey, God loves you. God wants to save your soul. Ah! Get away! You're evil! I want to hear that! You're offensive! What? You're mentally ill! I'm mentally ill! But you don't want to offend the person that's killing people, beheading them, 
and sending people away, mutilating women, killing gays, all, you know, people that are gay, off of, you don't want to offend them. <laughs> but we're telling you about Jesus that loves you and died for you. Something's wrong there. Think about that. Something's wrong there. Can I tell you this morning, I'd rather be doing things well for well-doing instead of evil's sake. It goes on here in verse 18. For Christ had once suffered for sins and just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, uh, by which also he went and preached unto the Spirit's in prison. I mean, she was down in the grave for three days. Uh, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering God waited uh, in the days of Noah, while he, that he the, while the ark was uh, preparing, wherein few that is uh, eight souls were saved by water. The uh, like figure wherein even baptism does also now save us. Amen. Now look at verse. If you go ahead, look at verse twenty-two. Uh, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God? Angels and authorities and powers being made subject to God. God has took care of business. God took care of that. In verse 16, I want you to notice here, uh, having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you, your, conver good, uh, your good conversation now, look at now, in what? In Christ. <clears throat> I'd rather be accused in Christ by living right and doing right unto others. Giving the good answer, living in good conscience, and they have living a good lifestyle for Jesus. Amen? In Christ Jesus. You know, in the Bible, there's many verses. I couldn't give them all. <laughs> okay? I couldn't give all the verses in, in, in Christ. <clears throat> but I'm going to share with you a few of them this morning. That was all the introduction. I'm going to give you now a drive-by message, okay? We only got 25 minutes. But when I tell you this morning, look at here. In Christ, there's so many things the Bible talks about. God has put in there to understand who you are, what you possess, what you have to utilize in your Christian walk with him. I want to help you with some things you need to understand. When other people might tell you otherwise, don't listen to them. If they sit there, but I'm going to tell you what, who you are in Christ, because the Bible states it all there. Don't get discouraged. Don't get defeated. Amen? Move forward. Build upon what Christ has already have done in your life and who you are as a Christian. I'm going to try to help you this morning. All right, let's pray. Father, again, Lord, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you so much for a great spirit. Lord, bless this message. Holy Spirit, do the work in the hearts. Help people this morning like you always do every Sunday morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You don't have to turn here for the sake of time, but in, in Romans chapter 1, I mean, in Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says this. There is therefore no, the now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit is a, 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 the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Amen? Once you get saved and born again, you're no longer condemned. You, the law, God's law in sin, condemned you. Once you got saved and born again, you got the Holy Spirit, you're no longer in a position of condemnation. But it's amazing when you go to some churches or you have some Christians that are constantly pointing a finger and condemning you, and they don't even know what you're going through. If you're not living right, I'm the first to admit it. We are, look at when you if you're coming in miserable, and you're coming in, and you know that you're you you're coming in, and you're afraid to come come into the house of the Lord and open up that Bible because you know you're not living right. I didn't tell you that. The Holy Spirit told you that, and God already knows your condition. So let God work on you. When you come through these doors, if you're, you're messing up and you're not right with God, guess what? Today's a perfect time to get right with God. Because you're not condemned. If you're saved and born again, you trusted Christ, you are not in the position of being condemned in the eyes of God. You are free from the law of sin and death. But you know what? What's, the sin has caused you to feel condemned. You know what that is? That's guilt of that. That's that the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You feel because you haven't looked at it. It's not that you're condemned to going to hell. No, you, you, feel the, you feel the conviction of not living for Jesus. So you know what? What a perfect time to start now. Hallelujah. Let me give you something. Let me give you some more help here. Look at it. Same chapter, Romans chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 38, 39 says this. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature 
shall be able to separate us from the love of God, look at now, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Even if you sinned, even if you feel shame, even though you're feeling you're convicted because you know that your life is not given over to God because you know it needs to be, you know when you did it one time before how great it was, and you've grown distance from God, and listen, you're not condemned. You're just all out of source with Jesus. But you know what? You've never been separated. You're, you're in one hand reach of the Lord Jesus Christ to grab you and put him back where you need to be, right in his bosom, being loved up by him. There's nothing that can separate his love towards you. You're the one that chose to walk away. But he's in one arm reach to grab you and grant you forgiveness if you ask it. And turn back to him, amen? And let him love you up. And let him feel the comfort and security of his love like it used to be to do great things for him. I don't know about you. Let me ask you a question. Who can do better on your life? Him or you? Who can do better on your life? Him or you? I want him to control. I want him to sit there and lead me through stuff. I want to depend on him. It's hard. Do you know why? Because us men are macho. I'm a man. I don't need no God. I'm tough. No, you're not. You're weak. You don't even know it. A real man. Look at be careful when you hear this, because we have, we have some bad examples in life. I'm a self-made man. I don't want to be. Listen, if you're a Christian, I want to be a God-made man. That's how it should be. Get that? I want to be a God-made man. I want God. I had to sit there and chuck my reputation. I had to chuck who I was. I had to chuck all those West Side stories, you know, back in the day, my manhood. I had to get rid of all that. You know, so my flesh gets in the, riled up. I got to start talking about my West Side stuff, you know. Guess what? That's all I've done. It doesn't mean nothing. Can I tell you what it is? I'm going to tell you how God has been working. I'm going to want to give glory to God in my life. I'm going to tell you what God, like, you need to talk about how God's great in your life. All the great things God has done. Because it has nothing to do with you. It has to do all about him. He gets all the glory. And can I tell you this morning? Look at, look at, I'm telling you right now. In Christ Jesus, you are loved. In Christ Jesus, you're no longer condemned. He wants you. But are you willing to want him? It goes on here. If we can turn over real quickly to uh, Romans chapter 16. Grab your Bibles. Romans chapter 16. Follow me because I'm going to read fast. It's 10-2. Janice said it had to be done by 12-15, she told me. Vinny, she thinks she runs the church, Vin. <clears throat> <clears throat> I have to. I only, see her. I only see her once a week. She don't let me in the kitchen on, she don't let me in the kitchen on Tuesdays. <laughs> Romans chapter 16, we'll look at verse 1 through 10 real quick here. Romans chapter 16, starting in verse 1, says this, I commend unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is in Centuria, that ye receive her in the Lord as become as saints, and that ye assist her in whatever business she has a need of you. Uh, for she hath been a secure of many, and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers. Look at now, my helpers. Look at now, my helpers in who? Christ Jesus. People say that all the time, I don't know what to do for God. I don't know what I am. You know what you can, you, can be, you can be a helper for Jesus. Any way possible, be a helper. Okay? Let me share you some things real quick. See these white speakers right here that we use some, and often we're hearing? This man right here goes, you know what? We need a better sound. We need a better sound up here. So this man over here put things together. He was a helper to make us, make me, hopefully it makes me, does it make me sound better? <laughs> People say, I already have a big mouth. They don't even need them, but we still use them for music and everything else. He was a helper. Some of you here took on a ministry to be a helper. Somehow people sit there and say, you know, sometimes uh, people sit there and say, look, I saw Saul, so she looks, like she looks like she's taking on the world. Let me be a helper. Hey, I see that you're up there struggling. Let me be a helper. Hey, I see that we're going to be ready to do an event in the church that's going to take some work. Can I help? I go, absolutely, be a helper. Do you know one of the greatest things you can be is be a helper for God's work? And in God's plan, whatever it be, it could be a shovel. Hey, it could, might even be a toilet brush. What are you laughing at? Oh, hint, hint, no. <laughs> you know? 
It could, be, it, it could be a hammer, it could be a drill, it could be a tall brush, it could be a mop, it could be a sander, it could be, it could be putting something together, it could be stirring a pot of soup, it could be serving, it could be cleaning, it could be, how about this, how about passing out a gospel track? There's a whole rack we just stocked up. Pass them out. You know what, you're a helper, look at, you're a helper to the cause of Christ with presenting the gospel to a lost and dying world. Be a helper to it. Pass them out. Tell people about Jesus. Invite them to church. Are you guys dying today? You're surviving the Pastor Pete message. My goodness. Vinny hasn't even fallen asleep yet. That's a good thing, right? Can I tell you this morning? You could, you, in Christ Jesus, you could be a helper for God's cause. Look at, and I, look at. Some people say, I, I can't do anything. You know what you You could pray. We, we produce, we, look at, we as a church here, we produce some lists. There's one on Facebook, right? We put on there, it's a little synopsis. I have one already in my Bible. If you want a copy, we'll get you a copy of it. This is about the whole, right here. This is what we want to be. This is what we want to do in our church. Take that thing home and start praying, 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 and praying. You might not see God working, but God's working. Me and Joe were talking about that on the way in, how God's working. You might not see the numbers filling in the pews, Okay. A lot of people are sick today. The one day we get visitors, like the Ryans, right? And Vinny and the whole family, right? That's a blessing. Imagine if all of us we could fill in these pews, like the, the Andersons and <laughs> Sandy being here. And boy, we can start, start filling this church up. That's what I'm saying. The potential's there. Just keep on praying. Angel, pray for Angel. I don't know where Angel went. She fell off the face of the earth. She came three weeks in a row, came out on a Thursday night Bible study. She's like just <clears throat> gone. The phone number I got for her, whatever, boom. I'm just trying to tell you, you never know, God's working. Nate's, look at Nick and Nate back there. Nate, see, you're free from your parents. <laughs> you get to enjoy a service about your mother whispering in your ear telling you, do you see that? Mark that down. <laughs> now you can avoid all that? Sit in the front row, second row, close to the preacher. I can spit on you while I'm preaching. Just like, it, like in the military, that drill sergeant thing. I can use you, bring an umbrella, yeah. You can, raincoat, whatever you got to do. Do you see what I'm saying? To get some real help. Listen, we're, about, we're real here, aren't we not? Yeah. We try to have fun, Lord. I mean, some of you guys are catching on a little bit. But can I tell you? Seriously, though, we have to realize <clears throat> who we are in Christ Jesus. What we have in Christ Jesus. And take our relationship a little more seriously today. It's, it's these days, this day, these days, the people are... They're whacked out because they need Jesus. Their life, people are falling apart because why? They need Jesus. People have walked, they're saved and born again. They walked away from Jesus and their life is, feels empty and feels void because you know why? Because they didn't, they didn't take Jesus seriously. Pray for them. Bring them, tell them to come back. Tell them to, here, turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In Christ. In Christ, there's no condemnation. In Christ, look at how, in Christ, uh, we are, we, we're bathed in his love. In Christ, we could be his helper. People say I have no purpose. I'm going to tell you this right now. Being a blessing to God's church, God's ministry, and God's people is a great thing. It really is. We, had, we have a couple that's going through a rough time. You know what? These people got, and these people got some money. They got money, man. They got money. So I get, a, I get a message in the inbox thanking me for their, their gift card and their card. And I sit there and I go to my wife and go, did you send them a gift card? And I think it was, yeah. I says, I go, well, they're going through some stuff. Do you want to be an encouragement to them? Oh, okay. I didn't know anything about it. Well, why'd you do it? I'm like, so you sit there and go, well, I think I, these people got more money. They know what to do with. But here we are giving them a gift card to try to be a blessing. Let them know that they're loved and they're being prayed for. My wife took the initiative to do that, and that, he's kind of haughty, you know, he's kind of, you know, proud in a lot of areas, but that was a blessing to them. And my wife goes, oh, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> okay. I mean, anyway, she was a blessing. She didn't ask my permission. She could be a blessing anytime she wants, you know? Go well, help be, be an encouragement to someone else. Absolutely. You never know what's going to happen. Hey, when, when Christians start shunning them and Christians start beating on them, they're going to hopefully one day realize that there's a church and there's a, there's a preacher and his wife that actually do care about your well-being, whether you have money or not. Because when they're poor, 
We're going to treat them the same way when they're poor. Right? It doesn't make a difference if you have money or not. So it's how you, you showcase your Christianity. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Look real quickly if you could. In verse 19 if you could. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm telling you guys to go over there. I'm not even over there. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We'll start there in verse 19 if you could. It says this. If in this life only we have hope, looking out, in Christ, we are all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the firstfruits of them that slept. For since by man came death by man, came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made what? There's two things we have in Christ Jesus, if you read that real quick. Ready? We have hope. Look at that, verse 19. Hope in Christ. You have hope. So whatever you're going through, whatever you've got to deal with, whatever confronts your life, you have hope in Christ. And the thing is, when you feel dead inside, you feel no life purpose, and you feel dead as a, and, and down this earth, you don't. You are alive in Christ. Because God has better, bigger plans for you. God wants to do greater things in your life. God wants to show you things. But the problem is, can I, help? Can I tell you something? I'm going to get a little angry. You ready? Get out of his way! Let him do what he needs to do in your life. Stop being so stubborn. Yield. <clears throat> Submit. Hand yourself over into him. You're missing out on great blessings. You're missing out on great things. You're missing out what he can do if you just let him. Well, how do you do that? You die to self. Chuck your pride and humble yourself. Yield yourself over for him to lead and guide. When, can I tell you what my, I'm going to not preach about? I'm going to preach about one of my, one of my shortcomings. Pray for me. You ready? I'm, a, I'm very analytical. I take out the, I get the chalkboard out. Or my dry erase board, whatever you want to call it. And I get all the equations and I get everything all lined up and I, I start putting the equations and all these different things and I'm almost like Sheldon on the Big Bang Theory, you know? And I start putting all this stuff on here and I start putting all that stuff on here and I go, it's going to work out. I got it all planned out, man. Hallelujah. I'm going to bathe it in prayer. And I start, and we start getting into the thing and everything I have on the board is... <laughs> and God goes, listen here, man. I got, I got a better plan. I go, no, but I'm the one that figured it out. I go, yeah, but you know... God goes, it ain't how it's supposed to be. I got, I'm gonna, we're going to do it this way. But I don't like that way. Well, too bad. Because my way is a better way. But i got to wait a couple more years. I want to get it done now. Yeah, but you'll see what I'm going to do in, in, within the next two years. It's going it's to start flowing. Little blessings, little nuggets of blessings. I'm going to bring people your way that you never thought would show up. I'm going to do things that you never thought would happen. Because you know Why? Because you need to learn faith, Pastor Pete. And I go, I have faith. No, you don't. Not the ones I want to give you. And you know what? You know what? I'm even afraid that you might sit there and pound your chest and say, look what I did. Instead of, what, look what he did. So even God's keeping me in check. And guess what happens? These past few years, you know what? God's been getting a lot of glory. Can I tell you, when you get to that point in life, we need to realize <laughs> we have hope in Him. We can be great, we can be more alive in Him if we let Him mold and make it. Amen? This is what I'm talking about. These are all verses that we can realize and realize that we have in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 31 down here a bit further, a little bit further down in verse 31. Same chapter. It says, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have, look at now, in Christ Jesus our Lord. I, look at now, I die what? Daily. Woo! He, Paul says, I rejoice dying daily. You know why? Because I get more alive. It feels good to be alive. I wake up in the morning, I'm alive. I'm doing great things for God because I'm dying daily. Huh? Yeah. When you sit there and put yourself aside and let God flow through you, let, flow, let him take control of things and navigate your life, and you sit there, my goodness, you feel alive. You have great hope. 
Look at now, and you got great rejoicing. You got great rejoicing. You know what's going to happen when you go to work? Why is that guy so happy? Why is that woman so happy? She's smiling and whistling and sitting and talking. I think she's singing Jesus Loves Me This I Know or something like that. I think she's mentally ill. I think she's off her rocker. It's those, 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 it's those crazy.